and then we are back and uh, there is more information regarding the uh, camp of the Hebrews it's kind of interesting because uh, the first um, showing of this uh, camp was obviously given by Moses and it shows very plainly the uh, setup of it and uh, there is for instance the uh, the tabernacle and then to the east there is uh, Moshe Aharon and his sons would be to the right of the tabernacle above would be Merari and below it Kehot and to the left Jerusalem and then above would be Naphtali to the right but it on top and then in the center Dan and to the left Asher and this would be towards the north towards then the east would be Issachar, Yehuda, Zivulum and then to the south Shimon, Reuben and Gad and then to the west Biamin, Ephraim, Manasseh so this um, is the insect uh, understanding is the uh, names of the twelve tribes and then in the very center is the uh, tabernacle so it makes it very interesting in studying because this is what Yahshua said would be sent out and uh, they would have the uh, coming of the goys from the outside and then obviously there are also uh, the four corners inhabited areas and those should remain as it was but then obviously outside is the Erev Rav mixed multitude and it doesn't take much for a person to understand that outside of this holy area would have the place of the Sanhedrin and then would have the places and the homes of the students and then obviously would have um, the place also of the functioned uh, brothers would be those uh, with uh, gifting of prophecy, gifting of the uh, miracles and then wisdom and then discerning of uh, spirits, um, tongues, interpretation of tongues and um, those would be obviously outside of this holy area and then what's more interesting is also the uh, relationship with the many areas regarding the very center of the uh, tabernacle because those must be done as they were before with absolutely no change other than obviously where it states Erev Rav mixed multitude would also have obviously the uh, place of the Sanhedrin and their homes 70 elders because Moses prayed over them and the anointing that was in Moses was divided um, from himself and then to 70 so this is where it came from and then of course there is also the places of those functioned and then also teachers obviously and then uh, a place that they would gather outside for the reading of the Torah because you would have to have the uh, direction of Ruach HaKodesh for the students to go into the area of the uh, in the midst of the clouds of glory and uh, would have to have uh, his uh, direction to go in there and then of course um, also the uh, Shilishim they would be trained outside and then later would be sent out and most interestingly is the uh, names of the tribes each of those they have a specific function in a world it makes it very interesting because it is a factor of each of them that comes specific areas of the earth however there are many mysticisms uh, mixed with it and it's not very uh, interesting but a person must understand then when the camps are being set in place then Ruach HaKodesh is going to show them what truly means as per what it was before but uh, the main 
kind of understanding is for instance there is the uh, emblem of each of the tribes and those are related with a certain areas of activity in the earth and then Shaul in fact mentioned um, strive for wanting to prophesy because through prophecy would comes then uh, words from heaven and depending upon what was spoken and the reason why the uh, prophecy was given when related with a goy coming from the outside to the gates and then given the prophecy and then depending of what was the prophecy was related with an area near the uh, tabernacle either related with the rulership then it would be Yehuda or Yosef or Benjamin Issachar or then Asher, Naphtali, Levi and then those areas are very specific so it makes it very interesting because this shows the way the world was ruled before and this is what is returning it is very evident however there are lots of information out there regarding some um, understanding of what those areas mean but because of the uh, contamination and mysticisms the best is first is starting up the camps and then let Ruach HaKodesh shows later on what it is and what not so this way we protect ourselves from any kind of a undesired areas but this is what it does um, and also the uh, the camp then makes it a very very interesting place where the students would come from the outside and the words of Yahshua would be coming very alive only those that are drawn by the Father they can produce works of justice and then they would be sent in the perimeter of the camp not in the area where the twelve tribes are at neither obviously the area where Moshe used to be and obviously not the tabernacle except when Ruach Kodesh would bring them in for a specific reason but we can understand outside of it it would be the area of the uh, Erev Rav mixed multitude and outside of this perimeter then would have to have a place for the Sanhedrin so then they would scrutinize the students coming in make sure they would know the Torah and then an area where they would be their living quarters and then the area of the Sanhedrin and then the area of the uh, teachers and those people that are involved with the functions of Ruach HaKodesh so then obviously and then the very outside area would be an area of planting, area of subsistence where the uh, Goys would start at first being servants living by faith not in the first perimeter and obviously not in the second but would be then afterwards being outside exercising of becoming Tzaddik in other words becoming his justice and then would first started by faith in the Mashiach that's why faith is only for the guys because in the camp there is no requirement of faith though they would learn what faith means so they could go outside and teach when the time would come and then obviously they would do the uh, work outside the planting the harvesting they would make sure the uh, areas were uh, provided with what was required to maintain the camp alive and then this would give us an understanding what the camps are going to be like and uh, from those areas from those camps they simply are going to govern the world not themselves but in a spirit they're going to guide the world as they did before so there is no news regarding it they're going to simply revive what was done before because the time of the Gentiles has ended as we know from the scriptures or in the very 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 end of the 23rd chapter of Leviticus 22nd verse and then eating the corners of the field so this is uh, where we are at and the fast we can get these camps in place the best it is because then people are going to start learning 
and then obviously from the camps then they would come out when they would go out in groups they would uh, come out with the entire copy of the Torah revised clean and then they would start another camp and then from there they would find a place where it was um, hospitable a place they can uh, um, plant they can gather they can harvest and then they would move on and then from there they would um, get more guys from the outside those the father draws place them in a camp they would be trained and uh, the layout is available we have the layout of the Ark of the Covenant we know what should be in the Ark of the Covenant it must be of a specific type of um, material should be um, also overlaid with gold and should have the uh, tablets of the law and then the uh, pure uh, bowl with the mana and also the rod of Aaron that uh, sprouted and obviously those should be um, um, done as per the instructions but of course the rod would be a standard rod and then a person would uh, make uh, um, flowers of course uh, with a composite material it's only a part where the students are going to learn what it meant so then in the spirit they have the understanding that this rod was not the actual rod but it was made in a certain way so they could understand what it meant and then obviously it would be related with the tables of stone that Moses received it was the second set of stones because the first was broken and then also the uh, uh, bowl of manna so then the students would understand where they came from and they ate manna for a long time and uh, this way then they wouldn't understand what it meant so then they would be completely trained from Bereshit until the end of Revelation the whole Torah would be absolutely explained and then they would go out and teach and preach they would function and they would have servants serving them for the time that they are teaching and preaching so it's going to be a very very busy time until the very end and closing of this age and the most exciting point is the whole plan is set on paper he only takes the desire of our friends and brothers the saved Hebrew brothers with land and uh, wealth they can start up the camps as per the instructions of Moses and this is the only factor yet not even pending anymore because Ruach HaKodesh is very active in what it takes is only a word from him and then get to work but the whole set is set in place and we understand that from these camps they are going to govern the world through their words not through the involvement of themselves so then many people are asking what would be then the Gentiles or the Goys what would become of them that's very simple to answer they are the people that are living by faith in what Yahshua taught so having a worthy copy of the word should be more than enough so they can live by faith and there are those of course they are going to be around the perimeter of the camp they are going to serve they are going to maintain the camp alive water they have to have provisions they have to have uh, grain they have to have bread they have to have animals they have to take care of uh, uh, a farm around them would be a farm so they can maintain the camp alive so then with this understanding there are those also that are going to be coming from the outside of the outer perimeter those also are people living by faith but they are coming they are receiving teaching and then returning to the evil place because outside of the perimeter of the land the holy land that they are in the place is evil 
They have to deal with the troubles of the world because Yahshua said, in the world you are going to have trouble. He meant outside of the perimeter established, they would have trouble. And this is what it means, because they went out in groups. They would go around and set up holy lands. This is what he meant, my church. Did he not say, go to the forest and make disciples of every nation and baptize in them? And then, the name of the Father, the Son, and Ruach Kodesh, those would be the set-apart people. This is what he meant. So they have to go out and set up churches. And where is the church? In the Kadosh Kadoshims. So what was taught first would be a shadow what it would be in the future. So those are in fact the shadows of the promised land. Because the church should be exercised the church should be exercised in the area of the Holy Land. It's not the fact that the Creator gave lots of Holy Lands because there was only a Holy Land. True, but then in the future would have the shadow of it. And that's why in Revelation there are camps. The camps, plural, and then also the holy seed, the beloved seed, that by the end is going to be reformed. Start making sense, doesn't it? Because then those people outside, those guys, not those serving the uh, area of the temple and the first perimeter, not those, but those very people, guys that are outside working in a world where it's very evil, they are also coming very often for more teaching and besides those that are those from nations they are coming with their problems during the time of Shaul what it was people from other nations they were coming with their problems they could not simply resolve them and then they were presented during the time of teaching and then they were giving instructions but they were not only given instructions of what to do to resolve their problems. They were also given instructions from the Torah for their own lives. They had some requirements to do also on their part. So it wasn't only the fact that they would, uh, okay, they would be people that would give answers to their problems. No, 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 it wasn't like this. They would receive instructions first of their personal lives. You know, those basic understandings of Shaul. You know, they are living, for instance, in, uh, in a Goy's life. And then guidelines were given by Shaul. Because they were so mixed up with other countries. You know, those are standard. If they want to have their problems resolved in a certain way, then there are guidelines. It's not only coming in evil people from the other side of the world, oh, we are guys and we won't ask for our problems, okay? There are guidelines while you are gone. Because then makes the Torah grace part of their own guidelines. Because they are not going to receive the answer to those evil people that are coming in with their problems. They have to take care of their own. If they are able. And they are not. So those coming in from the outside with their problems, they are going to receive guidelines. And those are the words of Yahshua. Through his people and then Metichiahu, and then the others, and then also the Acts. So then they begin to understand where they are at. It would be very ridiculous for evil people coming in from around the world and asking for answers, and having their evil problems resolved. It doesn't make sense. But those then would receive teachings from Yahshua, and some of the areas would be very specific. So then they would return later with glad tidings. And then it worked. And then it would have joy in a camp. 
So this is what is coming and it should be very fast because the world is truly asking for answers. And then of course there are those that uh, they are going to come and enjoy the time. Because then these camps they are going to represent the Holy Land. Let's say for instance the, uh, the feasts of the year they are going to be maintained and uh, they don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore. They can go to the camp because they are representatives of Jerusalem. Can you imagine if the nations would go to Jerusalem every time there was a feast? It would not fit. But then at this time there are shadow prophetic areas and those are the camps where the church is at. So then people are more acquainted. But this is what it means. That means the uh, north, south, east and west. To the north from the right towards the left is the Naphtali, then Hasher. Then the east comes Issachar, Yehuda, Zevulun. And then center is Moshe where he was at, Haron and his sons. And then on top Merari. And then the center is the Mishkan, and then below Kehat, and then to the left Jerusalem, and then to the south would be towards the right Shimon, and then the center Reuven, and then Gad. And then to the west would be Menashe, Ibrahim, Biamin, and then those four corners, the extreme corners, are the uninhabited areas. So this is what the, uh, the uh, camp is like. The first perimeter where the clouds of glory are at. And then um, obviously then the Erev, Rav are those outside. Then the students, the uh, place where the Sanhedrin they are living, their homes. And then next to them would be the students obviously but not in order because it's mixed. It's going to depend on what Ruach HaKodesh wants to do. And then the uh, teachers and then the functioned people, those people that are being prepared. And then the, um, those that are the Shalishim, then set apart with them for the purpose of forming another group. And then uh, the outside, the other perimeter would be the Gois, serving them with whatsoever is required. And this is mostly a farm, a farm place. So they can be maintained and away from the world because they are separated. And then from there would go another group. But please stay tuned, much more coming up.